So you struggled with your weight for the majority of your precious life. Welcome to the club. Now, I know I may not look like I have struggled with my weight. People look at me and they're like, you are so fit, hashtag goals, blah, 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 blah. You have not seen the absolute H-E double hockey sticks that I have put myself through for over 10 years, all right? This physique that I have achieved today has taken me more work than I think anyone on this planet would probably want to do. And I don't mean physical work. I mean emotional and mental work. And that is exactly what we're going to talk about today. Because if you want to overcome binge eating and yo-yo dieting, get out of the all or nothing mindset and stop fighting with your relationship with food and your body once and for all, it's going to take a lot more than the physical work. And I'm sure you know that because you've tried the physical work. You've tried cutting out the carbs, tracking your calories, going to the gym, hitting your step goal, and yet you are still struggling with your weight. And that is because this is an internal, mental, emotional game. And we were not taught how to master that game. But that is exactly what I was put on this planet to do. And that is exactly what I've done in my own journey. And that is what I do with my own clients. So I'm going to share with you a few tips that have completely changed the game for my fellow women who have struggled with yo-yo dieting, binge eating, overeating, emotional eating for as long as they can possibly remember. Now, if you are somebody who tracks your calories, but you track it inconsistently and you have a calorie goal, but whenever you are eating something and you know, you know that when you eat it, it's going to put you over your calorie goal. And because of that, you don't track it because you're scared of seeing the number and you feel like, oh, well, I already went over. So why track it? What's the point? I'll start again tomorrow. If that sounds like you, because Lord knows that was me. If that sounds like you, you need to get out of your head this idea that you have to be perfect with your calorie goal. Honestly, I want you to throw your calorie goal out the window. And I just want you to set the goal that you are going to track everything you eat. Why? So that you can just hold yourself accountable to what you're putting into your body. That is your only goal because it can be very stressful to try and hit a specific calorie goal when you are experiencing more hunger or more cravings, or maybe you're pregnant, or maybe you had bad sleep, which contributes to higher cravings. Or maybe you just want to eat more because you have a celebration and you want to enjoy the tequila and the chips and whatever. Trying to pressure yourself to stick to a calorie goal can just be a little too much and too overwhelming for where you are currently at. And so if you continue to try to pressure yourself to hit this calorie goal, you're gonna continue to want to think in the all or nothing mindset of, oh, well, if I'm going over my calories, I'm just not gonna track and I'll start again tomorrow or I'll start again Monday. So I want you to scratch that as your goal of trying to hit a calorie goal. And I just want you to set the goal that you're gonna track everything you eat. If you eat it, you're gonna track it, whether in an app or just writing it down. I just want you to just be aware of what you're putting in your body and just hold yourself accountable and not be scared to face the reality of it. Because at the end of the day, you are putting it into your body. You are. It's not like it doesn't exist if you don't write it down or you don't face it. You are. And the more you can learn how to face it and manage your self-talk. So when you write these things down, you might notice judgment saying, oh my God, I can't believe I ate that. Oh my God, I ate so much. That's such a bad food. Whenever those thoughts come up, I want you to redirect those thoughts into, you know what? I am so proud of myself that I tracked or logged or kept a journal of everything I ate. That was my only goal. And I did that. And I'm so proud of myself for overcoming my fear of keeping myself accountable. Like, oh my God, I am awesome. I am awesome. That is literally the self-talk that I had to have with myself. Instead of saying, oh, I need to be perfect with my diet and my food choices, I was like, you know what? The only goal is to keep myself accountable and just record everything I eat. Record everything I eat. And if I do that, that, that is the win. 
And the beauty is that from having that data of what you're putting in your body, then you can start to make slow and steady changes. Like if you notice you are not eating very nutritious foods, you know, for dinner, and then you end up overeating at night, that's something that shows you, oh, maybe I could fill my dinner with more protein and fiber so I feel more satiated so I don't feel the need to snack after. But if you don't keep a log and record and track everything you eat, you wouldn't know. You wouldn't know. You would be blind to your habits because you eat so many things in a day that you're going to forget what you had, you know, three days ago or last week. So just make the goal to track everything you eat. Hold yourself accountable. Let go of a calorie goal. If you go, if you have a calorie goal and you go over it, it doesn't matter because you know what? You logged everything, you tracked everything, and that makes you amazing. That makes you a badass. This is literally what I do with my clients. Like I just have them start tracking first and they're so used to having to hit a specific calorie goal, but that hasn't worked for them because they've tried to do that. They've pressured themselves and all it does is make them stressy and overeat because they're like, oh my God, I went over my calorie goal. I'm a failure. I suck. Get that out of your head. Just track. If you ate 3,000 calories, cool. You ate 1,500 calories, cool. If you ate 4,000 calories, cool. I don't care. I just want you to track. And if you do that, girl, we can have a party. Well, we're going to have a party because you did that. So the first thing you need to do is just track everything and get out of your head the idea that you have to be perfect with your calories and your macros. Start with your ABCs rather than try to write an essay. And starting with your ABCs is just keeping yourself accountable to everything you're eating. Now, when it comes to your workouts, if you have a workout schedule that you're trying to hit, but you know that your workouts are an hour long and they're very intense and on the days where you're just tired, it's the last thing you want to do. Instead of making your goal to finish and complete and go hard on this workout, I want you to change your goal to just get your butt to the gym. Just get your butt to the gym. If you get your butt to the gym three, four, or five times a week or how, whatever your number goal is, that is the win. That is the win, girl. You did amazing. If you just got into your car, showed up to the gym, and then went home, that's amazing. You still made the effort to go. You still made the effort to go rather than just saying, oh, I'm tired. I can't do my hour-long, two-hour workout I schedule, so I'm just going to sit on this couch and eat Doritos. No, no, no. 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 We're not doing that anymore. Get your butt to the gym. If you can only do a five-minute workout, you celebrate that five-minute workout. If you can only do a two-minute walk on the treadmill, you celebrate that two-minute walk. This is literally what I do with myself to this day. People think that I always go hard. No, because if I pressure myself to always go hard every day, that would be very stressful. So I was like, you know what? I just need to show up for myself. So I'm just going to show up to the gym and whatever I get done, I'm going to celebrate the heck out of that. But really... What matters is that you are showing up for yourself. You're not just throwing in the towel and giving up. And when you stop tracking and say, oh, I'll start again tomorrow. And when you don't go to the gym and just say, oh, I'll just go tomorrow. That is you throwing in the towel. Do something, anything, literally anything, anything tiny, small, showing that you are making effort towards that goal. Again, even after showing up to the gym, that is you making effort rather than doing nothing at all. And lastly, if you're somebody who has a step goal, or you have cardio goals, right? Or any kind of movement goals. And again, if you set the bar very high and you're used to being a perfectionist and a high achiever and you feel like when you have a busy day, oh my God, how am I gonna get 10,000 steps? Like that's very stressful. Or I said I was gonna go on an hour long walk, but that just seems so long. Just put on your shoes and get out the door. Again, if you only do a one minute walk, you did a one minute walk and that is awesome because you tried, you put on your shoes and you went out the door, but you didn't just sit on the couch, scroll Netflix and not try at all. The, the pattern and the theme that I'm trying to get you to understand is that you just need to show up even in just 1%, even just 1% of you showing up again, which is just you doing one set of an exercise. Cool. You showed up to the gym. That's great. Even if that's you just putting on your shoes, walking out the door of your house, and then coming right back in. Cool. You put on your shoes. That's more than you could have said last week when you didn't put on your shoes at all. Or you just showed up to the gym, or you tracked you tracked your calories, even though you went way over your intended calorie goal. Girl, you tracked your food. That's awesome. Or maybe you don't like tracking, but you like to take photos of your food so you can keep a photo log. You know, you took photos of everything you ate. That is awesome. You held yourself accountable, right? Just understand that you're not going to go from zero to 100. And there's going to be days where you feel like crap. Don't expect yourself to 
do the most on those days because you're just setting yourself up for failure. If you just accept this idea that, hey, I just need to show up even in, in, in a tiny way. I just need to show up rather than just say, oh, I'll start tomorrow or I'll start Monday. If you get out of that, that mindset of I'm going to start tomorrow or I'm going to start Monday and you just ask yourself, how can I show up today even in the smallest way possible and then celebrate that? You will build so much self-confidence, self-love, and you will create so much momentum that you can propel yourself off of and continue to keep going. But the reason why you're struggling so bad with yo-yo dieting is because you think you either have to be amazing, and if you can't be amazing, then you might as well start tomorrow or Monday, and then you throw all caution to the wind. You completely neglect your healthy habits. You eat like crap. You don't do anything. You lay on the couch all day. Just do something and you would be shocked at even just doing a little, a little bit of movement or just a little bit of effort towards being slightly more mindful with your nutrition. It will give you momentum and energy to keep going. And oftentimes you'll find yourself doing even more. You'll find yourself doing even better than you thought you did. You did, but it started off by stop pressuring yourself to try to reach level 100. When you're starting from level zero, girl, meet yourself where you are. If you're at level zero, start at level one. Why are you trying to go to level 100? There's no rush. I mean, I know you feel like it. I know you feel like, oh, I need a rush because I hate how I look. I hate how I feel. I need to lose 100 pounds by tomorrow or else I'm going to hate myself. You are amazing. You are beautiful no matter what your body looks like. Your soul, your soul is beautiful. I want you to just start finding some love for yourself. It doesn't have to be how you look, just for who you are as a person because you are an awesome human being. You are an amazing human being. And so I just want you to find some love for yourself in this moment so that you don't feel the need to stress yourself out by trying to lose so much weight so quickly or else you're going to continue to hate yourself. You have so much about you that you can love and appreciate. It doesn't have to be how you look. It doesn't have to be your weight. It doesn't have to be anything to do with your physical appearance. But your heart and who you are and how you love others and how kind you are and the positivity that you contribute to this world or your kids or your husband or fiance, ground yourself in love for just who you are and use that to calm your mind and your soul down when it's telling you that you need to lose all this weight or else you're going to be ugly and nobody's going to love you and and you're going to be rejected by society. Use the love for who you are as a person deep down inside, whether skinny or fat, doesn't matter. You are still the same person inside. Use that love to ground you so that when you feel the need to stress yourself out and go from zero to hundred, you say, Hey, you know what? I will get there, but I refuse to pressure myself and bully myself and be mean to myself and trying to lose all this weight because I hate myself. No, I don't hate myself. I love myself. There's so much about me to love. This is literally the self-talk that I instill in my clients because without this self-talk, without this emotional aspect of your journey, you are going to stay on the hamster wheel and the roller coaster of the yo-yo dieting cycle. So I hope in the depths of my soul that you found this video helpful, that something in this video resonated with you that you will take into your own journey. If you want to work with me one-on-one to overcome yo-yo dieting and reach and maintain your fat loss and physique goals once and for all and find that balance and healthy and positive relationship with food and your body that you've always wanted, then visit my website, www.teamevolve.co and submit an application form to work with me. If you want to follow me on my other social medias where I post a host of more fat loss, yo-yo dieting, overcoming binge eating tips, then you can follow me on Instagram at Vivian No and on TikTok at Vivian No with an underscore at the end. If you want to see more binge eating and yo-yo dieting content from me, then go ahead and click on this video right here. And be sure to subscribe to this channel so you get the notification for when I post more content about topics just like this. 
And lastly, I just want to say thank you so much for being here and for joining me in this video. I am sending you so, so, so much love, so much love on your journey. I fully believe in you. I fully believe in you. You can do this. Bye, my friends.